Today is November 13th, 2019, and this is the business section. And nothing but business section. Nothing, nothing but business news. This week is going to be a busy week. This week is going to be the start of a series of busy weeks. A business week. <laughs> a businessy. Business. And they're going to get three sections on Friday, which is kind of like a bonus, right? Mm. It's a bonus, and you didn't even have to ask for it. It was just a free bonus. Of course it's you, good for everybody, right? Of course, if you want it now, you can join it for... Oh, wait. oh, it was a, it was a transition. Oh, I messed it up. No. AT&T switches customers to a more expensive plan without asking them first. What a cool guy. That's a bonus plan. AT&T adds 15 gigs of bonus data to older plans, but also raises the price $10. So these are older family plans that had you know a fixed amount of data that users shared. Uh, and AT&T is hoping that you will switch to, because your old plan is no longer available. AT&T is hoping that you will switch to another plan where they redefine what the word unlimited means. And people called them and were like, hey, I don't want this. Can I just not take this 15 gigs and get the $10 back? And they were told no. And they're like, so wait, you, you're not allowed to do that. And AT&T was like, read your contract. And they said, what, are you telling me that your contract says you can just do what you want anytime? And AT&T said, yes. Man, if only we had some sort of commission at the federal level that would oversee commerce and trade. That would be amazing. This stock photo, we've talked about this before, so good. We're using it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting a lot of mileage out of that, and I don't blame them for it. AT&T behaving badly? Who? No, I mean, just, no. It's just, I had a, I had a good lead-in, though. So, you mentioned unlimited data, and we talked about that before. Now, to me, you're never going to convince me that the word unlimited can be applied to a plan, wait for it, it has limits. <laughs> but the business world, that seems to be an okay thing. And even though they lost this case, they did not lose the ability to call the unlimited plan with limits unlimited. <laughs> at t users whose unlimited data, quote unquote, was throttled is going to get $60 million in refunds. This was five years ago. This case has been dragging on for five years. at t has had this going on for five years and finally 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 this legal case with the FTC is settled and AT&T is going to issue refunds of 60 million dollars but, but the number of people affected by this that's going to be a refund to their customers of like a dollar our technica was like can we get away with using the cool piggy bank image again? And the art director was like, no, no, no more of that. And they're like, what are we going to do? Just, just the logo. No, see the art director, the art director would have said, yes, that was the editor who said, no, we can't keep using the same image because it'll, it'll be confusing for users looking at it on the homepage. So they really softballed this one. Yeah. yeah. That's what, that's a good example of why you should always make it. So your logo works in black and white though. Cause you don't know how publications will use it. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, you can still buy the unlimited plan, and it still throttles you, but it just says that now in the fine print, so that's okay. So, no one wins here. <laughs> you get a little money back, I guess. That's good. It does throttle you differently, but it's still terrible. It kind of sounds like AT&T one. If they can continue, they don't really have to change anything, and they have to do a minimal <laughs> payment. Yeah, 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 60 million is a slap on the wrist so for a company won. of that scale. Just wasn't the consumer. <laughs> Krista, how hyped were you about iPad for Apple. I was hyped until I started reading reviews about it and then I became decidedly unhyped. What about the people of Venezuela? Were you not gonna stand with them? I guess not. Wow, Hong Kong and now Venezuela. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> well, you were right to be suspicious because it turns out uh, Photoshop for iPad is hot garbage. It's not great. <laughs> Adobe exec has de decided to defend Photoshop for the iPad after the app falls flat. It's got a two and a half out of five stars. People do not like it. I think it would have been fine if Adobe had said, here, it's free. It's not all there yet. They didn't do that. No, they're charging a subscription fee on top of the subscription fee you already have to have for desktop creative cloud. And it's like, really? Really? You're going to do this? How like, about no? Does yeah. no work for you, Adobe? I have Procreate, which I spent like 10 bucks on once, and I get continual updates forever. And so. Bloomberg points out that a lot of the features that are in Procreate and other competing software are not in Photoshop, Photoshop for iPad. So 
Yeah. The guy from Adobe spun it as, well, you know, this is a 30-year-old program. and We did change the interface up a little bit in order to be able to do some cool, new, innovative stuff. And it's like, no, that's that's lies. A, this- a lot of people did say that, like, it was better than they expected in terms of usability, but they were just like, it, there's no point in spending the money on it when yes. you can do another program that does everything it does and better. And if it's going to get better, buy it when it gets better. Yeah, exactly. Why would you pay a subscription fee? just to be a beta tester. Well, I mean, there is that thing about, you know, when someone sees you working on your new logo in the Starbucks on your iPad or your MacBook. (laughs) Mm. Except you don't make logos in Photoshop. We've reached peak hipster. You don't, loser. You gotta do it in vector so to scale correctly. Google hates everybody. Or Google employees hate everybody. Everything that Google does to make money, Google employees are pissed about. And they're not having any more of it. I chuckled and about this. This week, they put on their blindfold and they threw a dart at a dartboard and they said, well, we hate oil companies. Googlers are now protesting deals with big oil. So I don't like the term Googlers because it implies that anyone who uses Google, like to Google <laughs> something, is part of this. Internal Googlers. Yeah. Google employees. I don't know. This seems like an odd thing to get upset about and perhaps a bit late. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it starting to transition out of the major energy source. I don't think that's the case, though. That's going to be oil's going to be around for a long time to come. Yeah, because if it's not being used for fuel, it's going to be used for making plastic. So, but yeah, this is I don't even want to itemize all the stuff, but from breastfeeding to white supremacy, the Google people half at least once a month they got to pick a new thing to be angry about. So for November, it's oil. Mark your calendar. It seems like they should continue to be upset about things like, I don't know, uh, DHS or border security no. or something. Like, nothing has changed no, there. No, border security was August. Uh, We're done with that. <laughs> they have a calendar up in the conference room. Yeah. Did you not see it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not allowed to look at it because if you too many people join the calendar, then oh, it's yeah. investigated. <laughs> <laughs> they get an alert. It's like, warning, 17 people are in conference room B. I don't know anybody who is enough of a monster an anti-capitalist deviant to share passwords. I would never do that. To media sites. <laughs> never. But if I did know them, I'd turn them in. <laughs> Netflix, HBO, and cable giants are coming for password cheats. They have said that the industry is losing billions of dollars because those, those, those filthy scoff laws, they're sharing passwords. What is this? Jokes on them. I wouldn't pay for it anyway. <laughs> you know, that's an excellent point. Because what did they estimate? Like $160 million a year? Oh, well. Thanks, Bloomberg. Yeah. But it was some massive amount. They're like, we're losing this amount of money. And they didn't read any of the memos from the game companies and the movie companies about those piracy numbers. Because most people just simply aren't going to consume it if they can't get it for free. You know, Bloomberg themselves. Need a lesson in that. <laughs> I never pay a new Bloomberg. I don't care. I don't care what you do. Yeah, I'll so, just find it from somewhere else if I can't. Business read it. Insider is the the angel that you're looking for <laughs> if you just want rehashed New York Times Bloomberg stories because <laughs> they make their money off of that. That's what they do. But anyway, they're talking about thumbprints. How quick are you to cancel your Netflix? If you have to use a thumbprint app yeah, to don't, get into it, I watch one show on Netflix, and honestly, like I'm kind of hit or miss on it. So like. I would just not do it. I'd get rid of it. Yeah, that's going to backfire. That's going to be a, the the beginning of the end of Netflix, I think, if they start with this nonsense. They'll never get to Diana and the Crown if they have to end soon. But it's not just then. Uh, HBO and the cable companies, the cable companies know what's happening. They see that they have to transition to streaming as well. So as cable, the big cable companies are going to jump in the pool and immediately poop in it. That's what's going to happen. And then they're going to be like, I don't know why everyone's getting out of the pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, we've talked about uh, HP a lot this year, but we almost always talk about HP Enterprise. And if you don't know, that's not HP anymore. They had a, a parting of ways. They split off into good company, bad company. So what is the floundering regular HP going to do? It's going to get consumed. <laughs> CNBC says that Xerox has made a cash and stock offer for HP, sources say. 
So uh, this is, uh, you know, Xerox, nobody had heard of Xerox in a long time. This might be a publicity stunt because they've got, it's got that activist uh, shareholder, Carl Ickfen. I, I, I can. can. I can. Yeah, so that, that guy's the guy that's behind this. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Xerox is... Uh, Smaller than HP. You got to think that copiers, I mean, now that we're going into a paperless world... Xerox helped us get there, and now they're going to go quietly into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, like imagining that Xerox is like maybe together we'll be able to help each other out. It's like no, no, neither of you have anything worth keeping. But so one of the big uh, revolutions in the stock trading world was the quant quantitative stock investing, where you don't talk about how good the company is; you talk about the past 20 years of data that you've carefully back tested with AI. <laughs> and it took a special kind of savant to get into that kind of thing. And this is where a lot of high functioning, maybe on the spectrum people, got some really high paying jobs in Wall Street by doing this kind of thing. But not everybody on the spectrum has the gift with the curse. <laughs> some of them just have the curse. And it's pretty common knowledge that those people go to Robin Hood. And make terrible decisions. <laughs> Robin Hood traders discovered a glitch that gave them infinite leverage. There was one guy who had uh, deposited $4,000 and somehow leveraged that up to a million. So, what you can do, Robin Hood is terrible, terrible, terrible software. I mean, it is laughably bad. And it's so laughably bad, they did not have a check. So, what you could do is you could use margin to borrow up to twice your deposit. So you could deposit $2,000, get Robinhood Gold for $5 a month, buy $4,000 worth of stock, sell options on that stock in the money, so it's not a super big risk, and then that money that you get from the sale would go back into your buying power on top of your regular buying power which will then allow you to repeat the process infinitely <laughs> every time getting double until the point that you were happy with your leverage. <laughs> One guy referred to it as uh, personal risk tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great video. Uh, so the first guy to figure this out publicly, at least he took $2,000, turned it into $50,000, put it all on what they call a YOLO trade on uh, Apple puts right before earnings and filmed himself. He, I mean, pre-market trading, he knew what the stock was going to do, but options don't start trading till 930. So he started filming his Robin Hood interface with a face cam at uh, 929, 930. And you see the moment that his position just gets destroyed and he loses like, you know, $40,000 of which he has 2000 actual dollars backing up. <laughs> And he makes a, a, a fun sound when that happens. <laughs> oh, no. Not a, not a good thing to do. Don't do it. Although it is super entertaining. <clears throat> we haven't uh, ta been talking too much about Tesla. They've been kind of, I don't know, quiet. quiet. They did really good in their earnings, though. You know, there was that story. Shut a lot of people up. Hurt a lot of the short sellers. But we're going to have the next big milestone this month. Tesla will unveil its Cybertruck pickup on November 21st in Los Angeles, Elon Musk says. Now, I don't know if they've officially given a picture of it. A lot of people have presumed what it looks like. I think it looks stupid. It should it should have been unveiled in like San Antonio, right? Like some place like LA who drives trucks in LA. Oh. <laughs> well, it's just probably he didn't he didn't want to travel. He probably lives uh -huh. there, right? So yeah, now he says it's going to be a better truck than the F-150, which is kind of an entry-level truck, right? I mean, is that like a great truck? I, I don't know, but I hear a lot of like hype around that truck. A better truck than the F-150 and a better car than the Porsche 911 together. That doesn't seem... For the low price of all your money. Is it powered by Energon cubes? <laughs> oh, man. This is, uh, this is Bloomberg. A oh, we hit our, our limit. Our limit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It gets really Very invasive upset. when you hit your limit. So, yeah, this one actually I didn't get to read because I got hit by this too. And I couldn't find anybody else that covered the story. Did you get to read this one? I did. 
It's uh, the a tes- Tesla Model 3 survey. Owners weigh in on autopilot safety. There's a... It's it's just a survey of Model 3 owners. Like, hey, how is autopilot doing? There's some really horrifying stories coming from the survey. A lot of, a lot of near misses. Meaning that uh, it was a miss, but it was very close. And it could have just as easily been a hit. Uh, in terms of like the autopilot breaking suddenly or like an insect flying into the camera and causing the the thing to lock up the wheels at you know highway speed just crazy stuff just completely nuts stuff summon summons sort of sort of weird i read another story maybe i did find an alternate thing for this but it was about the summons <clears throat> and no one really ha- there's no law about this right i mean we never had self-driving cars before so I think they ask a judge or a traffic person or whatever, and they said, well, if you summon to the car and it's your car, it's as if you're driving it in terms of fault. And I'm about 90% sure that no insurance company will cover that. Yeah. Because there's nobody in the car. So you would be at fault for an accident and uncovered as far as insurance goes. There was a, a, a video that somebody took of a... Tesla just stumbling around a parking lot and it was driving the wrong way down a down a lane in a parking lot trying to get to the owner. So how long until that happens inevitably and someone sues Tesla to get back those losses? I would say Tesla would just quietly settle out of court. How many times can they do that though no. before that becomes a problem? <laughs> well, maybe they can use some of that sweet SpaceX money to funnel back into Tesla like he did with Solar City <laughs> if that happens. <laughs> because SpaceX seems to be doing quite well. SpaceX goes for two big reuse milestones with the next launch. On uh, on Tuesday, the company completed a static test firing of the Falcon 9. So this is like a fourth reuse for the materials here. It's a not for a SpaceX customer. They're using their own stuff. But they're also using recycling the, for lack of a better way to describe it, the, uh, the Sabo that uh, goes with like launching the satellite. Because that just landed in the ocean. Like That doesn't even have any rocketry or anything. They just picked it up out of the ocean, sprayed the salt water off of it, and like, yeah, it's good enough. And it's the first time that component has been reused. It's going to be another round of Starlink satellites. So it's literally going to be the same payload. Don't even have to refit it inside. Just blast those satellites all over the place up there. They're going to give me internet out in the woods. Yeah, because that's why you go to the woods, right? Yes, to get to the internet. (laughs) It's stronger there. (laughs) It's Earth powers. Now, as I was talking about Solar City and that became a part of Tesla, I think, uh, they put roofs on buildings and houses. And there was a small problem. Small. uh, With fire. Once in a while, there would be a tragic fire. (laughs) And when I say once in a while, I mean inevitably, if you let them live long enough. (laughs) So Walmart was probably the biggest customer that had a problem with this, and they had a lot of problems with it. So they sued. But I think uh, Mr. Musk may have opened the checkbook. (laughs) Walmart reaches a settlement with Tesla over the solar panel fires and drops the lawsuit. I didn't get to see this story. Was there any details about what the fix is? Money. I mean, but like... No, no, there's no fix. They're not going to like... You invest in solar, they get paid, screwed, and then you have to pay more money to fix it. Probably they're going to rip those roofs off and cash those checks <laughs> and get a, a, a realistic roof. <laughs> That's too bad. That is too bad because solar panels are really neat. I, I wonder if I can... Get, like, I would love to get the scrap solar panels because they weren't terrible. They were just like... No, no, they're going <laughs> to destroy those. That's another lawsuit waiting. Part, uh, part of the settlement is you give that back. <laughs> So we can properly bury it under the Nevada (laughs) desert somewhere. Yeah, if if they get all the evidence, then in their history, in the history of the company retrospective, they can write, it's like, and we bootstrapped ourselves using the Walmart solar roof money that we, it's like, where are they now? It's like, no, no way. They won't say anything about that. They'll just quietly get swept under the rug. That won't be on the company timeline. (laughs) We often warn you, don't buy smart TVs. And I know it's tempting. I look at those deal sites and it's like, wow, really? Walmart is going to offer me a 45-inch TV for $250? How can they do that? Well, they can do that because they're going to sell your data long past the sale date of that TV. (laughs) It's worth it for them to get that data, and it's bad. But that's not the only reason it's bad. It's bad for other reasons as well. Older Samsung smart TVs to lose Netflix support next month. 
So these TVs have a microcontroller in them that's just too old and slow. So Netflix works today. It's not going to work next month on these older smart TVs. Although these were sold, I think, between 2010 or manufactured in 2010 and 2012. Nine years on a smart TV is a pretty good run. So that's kind of like, hey, at least Samsung's making TVs that last for nine years, right? You can get a Chromecast. How far we've fallen. That it's like, oh, you know, nine years, that's fine. It's fun. I'll interject. Uh, I got my mom a smart or a TV, a Vizio, and there was no option to turn the smartness off. And all she uses it for is over the air. And then she has a little, a separate little Roku thing that she knows how to work for Netflix. So it's like over the air channels plus Netflix. That's literally all it is. And setting up that TV was harrowing, uh, and uh, just just terrible. And there's uh, buttons on the remote for like Netflix and all the other stuff. But like if you just want to switch back and forth between Netflix and over the air, there's no way to do it. And it constantly harasses you to agree to the terms so that you can enable Smart Link. It's the most anti-consumer, like anti-actual ease of use thing I've ever seen. The whole time you were setting it up, did your mom just sit there and ask you questions about it too? Yeah. Like, why yeah. isn't it working? Yeah. <laughs> I saw a Reddit post. Fix it. Someone bought a $2,000 treadmill and it wouldn't activate until they went online, registered an account, and put a credit card on file. Wow. Yeah. It's like, that's going back. Like, why is your treadmill on the internet? <laughs> why does it need your credit card? <laughs> That's the question I ask more and more about things. It's like, why do you need my payment information for this? <clears throat> so the uh, VR world, uh, it just is, it's not become what everybody thought it was going to be. Some people really seem to like it, but for the most part, I think the masses are just not into it yet, which is kind of sad. But what about augmented reality? I think that's even less uh, successful in terms of catching the imagination of the masses, but that hasn't stopped Microsoft. Microsoft's HoloLens 2 starts shipping. TechCrunch apparently took one apart. For a cool photo. Or, may, or maybe this is a press photo that they ship with a kit. That's just, things neatly is, organized. This is one of those build your own lightsaber kits from Disney. It's a $3,500 <laughs> HoloLens 2. There it is. It's uh, conspicuous. <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> <laughs> no one will notice you wearing that in a board meeting they talk about uh, some of the improvements is it's got better recognition for hands which is how you interact with it you can tell your individual fingers apart a lot better now and uh, you know uh, everything is upgraded in terms of the, the view <laughs> it has a thorium power source right next to your brain oh. so yeah <laughs> I and trust Microsoft <laughs> the other thing you can do with it is you can put holographic anchors in the world which are persistent so like if you have it on you can always see these objects in the world but they're just holographic oh it's like building a memory palace in augmented reality that's cool so that makes sense for if you were wearing one of these out in public but is anybody gonna wear that out in public <laughs> wendell might i could see you maybe doing that probably if, like no clients around you would just wear that around the office i want the i want a long battery life though that's probably a, a tall ask right now. Well, there's plenty of room in there. It might be a little warm wearing that thing around. Be good for the winter. Red versus blue is... Uh, <laughs> Switching to hardware news, kind of. You know, you can almost kind of call it at this point. I mean, <laughs> you know, Intel is, is down and bleeding on the canvas right now. The count is about seven. And AMD's just <laughs> kicking him in the gut. <laughs> and, uh, well, no, AMD's over in their corner just flexing. You know? <laughs> it's like getting the crowd reactions. But... It doesn't stop some people from continuing to kick Intel and to kick them in some pretty esoteric ways. Now, this <laughs> article, the headline seems really exciting. When you get down to it, on one hand, yeah, it's somebody's job to realize these things. But on the other hand, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Server the Home has the Intel performance strategy team publishing intentionally misleading benchmarks. So their Intel has got a new server CPU, this 56 cores, but it's unreleased. The general public and, and reviewers can't, can't get at it yet. I haven't laid hands on one, and I got to play with uh, Epic Rome uh, way before it was uh, released. Uh, oh my God, you're such an insider. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I don't know. But uh, Ryan just quietly flexed on you. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so this is the benchmark, and, and so it's Intel's unreleased chip that no one else can test against AMD's chip. And so there's a lot of question uh, with regard to like, 
how is the benchmark configured? Is this a fair test? Was the code, the appropriate code pathways enabled? It turns out that there is an update to this story and it, it turns out that yeah, Intel actually did enable a certain code pathway, but these are 400 watt chips versus 225 watts. So is it a fair fight? I don't know, it's a mess. It was a point three versus point four version of a software that doesn't unlock the Zen 2 stuff. And it's just the level of pettiness here is like, you know, star sized in comparison to planet sized where you might normally go. <laughs> and it was just, it was a, a piece of software you, this guy apparently uses like scientific software. And it's just, I was like, wow, they're already dead. Stop <laughs> poking them it, with a stick. Let it happen. <laughs> and speaking of their demise, AMD unveils the world's most powerful desktop CPUs. Need CPU power? AMD has you covered with new 24 and 32 core AMD Ryzen processors. So yeah, the press deck on this is really exciting. There's no independent or third party reviews yet. That's coming. But uh, AMD released their, their positioning and their pricing. And I think the pricing took everybody by surprise. It's uh, $1,400 for the 24 core and $1,999, 2000 US basically for the 32 core. And a new socket. Yeah, because it's too powerful. Yeah, for your primitive old sockets. <laughs> so and they also mentioned the 3950X, which is the new desktop CPU, will be available starting uh, basically toward the end of the month. Or and some, they had some performance for that as well. So 16 cores on the AM4 socket. So that's neat, and the software update that goes with that. Meanwhile, at Samsung, much like Intel has done with some of their other. Uh, exploits like the modem part of their company they're like you know what uh we're tired of competing let's just wrap it up <laughs> samsung shutting down custom cpu division in the u.s so yeah this was uh this this was not too surprising because this technology in the u.s is basically outdated at this point at one time it was cutting edge but not anymore um some of those staff are going to transition to new um positions in samsung some of them are going to go work elsewhere uh, this article speculates that maybe Samsung's relationship with AMD has something to do with that, but it doesn't go into further detail. We talked about in the government section, China's uh, penchant for stealing ideas. They seem to like doing it. And uh, Xiaomi, is that how you pronounce that, Xiaomi? I don't speak Chinese, so I don't it know. Seems like Xiaomi to me. I thought it was Xiaomi. Xiaomi? Okay. Oh. okay. It's one of those. Insert your favorite. <laughs> but when they came out with their first phone, a lot of people looked at it and they were like, oh, that looks a lot like an iPhone. And they were like, no, no, that's not an iPhone. Are you stupid? It's a Zomi phone. It's the Golden Arcs. It's not the Golden Arches. And now they've come out with an Apple Watch and those same people are like, oh. <laughs> they look... I actually don't know which one is the Apple Watch versus the, the knockoff. They might both be. Is it is it a knockoff? No, I don't know. They uh, they yeah. might both be. I don't know. They've launched the Mi Watch, one hundred eighty five dollar Apple Watch clone. It's got a the heart rate sensor and uh, a whole bunch of other things. Scroll down. There were pictures in the article. Maybe they'll maybe they'll show the differences. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Not TechCrunch. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people have pointed out real similar, real similar, but very cheap. I bet the Chinese citizens don't care a bit about that Apple logo. Nope. Especially not after the whole uh, whatever it was last week. Yeah. And Tim Cook weeps. He sheds a tear. <laughs> Wipes it away with a $100 bill. SoftBank. SoftBank is not actually a bank. That's a weird name, isn't it? <laughs> They're an investment company, and they have been behind some of the bigger names in tech, especially the startups. They just throw money at them and they reap huge rewards when these companies IPO at ridiculous valuations. Except when that doesn't happen. <laughs> SoftBank reveals a $6.5 billion loss from Uber and WeWork Turmoil. They're straight up talking about replacing the, uh, the guy at the helm of SoftBank as a result of these blunders. $6.5 billion is a big number. That's, uh, it's not good for your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Do you put that on your LinkedIn profile? I don't, By the way, lost a bunch of money. I want to know who thought that you know the WeWork concept was so innovative to be worth that much. Like, well, it's funny because both of those companies have those like maverick CEOs, 
And you wonder if somebody at SoftBank was sort of spellbound by that. Probably. Yeah. It's so frustrating how so much of it just comes down to charisma. And yeah. we're so uncharismatic. <laughs> so <laughs> terribly uncharismatic. That guy was, uh, SoftBank's Japanese, right? And so that guy was just like slapping girls' asses in the office. And they were like, oh my God, this guy's a rock star. <laughs> well, give him all the money. <laughs> Turns out that was a bad idea. Well, Krista, you said that you couldn't wait to go camping so that you can stare at your phone. Yes, and that's what I do. Here's the good news. When you level your camping all the way up and max it out, and you're camping in the Arctic, you can still do that. <laughs> Kepler achieves world first for satellite broadband with when connection to the Arctic. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> what? That was me stumbling over my words. Just ignore it and move on. Look at what are they looking for out there? A better internet connection. I, I was going to say, maybe they're arguing about a penguin variety. <laughs> like, I'll show you, Bob. <laughs> I was disturbed that their upload was so much better than their download. Their I, download wondered was if only that was a, I wondered if that was a typo. Like, why would that be? Is that just inherent to satellite communications? Uh, probably, Doesn't seem right. Yeah. Their uplink is saturated. How so, does that make you feel, Ryan, knowing that so many houses you looked at you couldn't get internet at. Well, you could get satellite, but it's garbage. Yeah. I mean, 120 up is, I, I don't know. I couldn't deal with 38 down. Yeah. That's, I couldn't live like that. But if that was reversed, maybe I could live like that. Maybe. I wouldn't like it. How are they going to watch cat videos? You could watch cat videos with that connection. That's all they're doing. The upload, you could upload them too. So sad. Dark. Just like here, now that the time has changed and you leave work at five and it's dark and sad. <laughs> have you done any new cat videos since the new camera? Yeah, oh, I haven't yeah. uploaded them yet, though. <laughs> I've got one on camera yeah, right now. Ryan has a new brand new phone. I got uh, this next video is when I pet Crouton. Like when I get home at the end of the day, I want to pet the cats, right? That's why you get pets. So you have someone to greet you when you, you go home. You can go in, you can de stress a little bit, pet the cats. So Crouton is all about that. And he's adorable. He'll just roll around and, you know, he's a great cat to pet but toast insists on being fed as soon as i get home <laughs> and he will just sit on the floor and scream while i'm petting the other cat oh. so that's the video that we have coming <laughs> on level one cat. i hope that you did some uh so like the camera panning back and yeah, forth yeah, yeah. yeah every time he meows like he gets the shot <clears throat> we talk a lot about patent trolls here on the level one news and this year has been a great year for patent trolls getting their comeuppance. <laughs> and Cloudflare has done a really commendable thing here. Project Jingo, the Project Jingo saga, how Cloudflare stood up to a patent troll and won. This is a patent troll Blackbird. And so Blackbird has collected a bunch of patents for a dollar and unspecified stuff. And it wasn't enough that Cloudflare merely responded to the patent troll. They actually built an online database of all of uh, Blackbird's patents that they were asserting against other people and paid randos on the internet to find prior art and then they used that in illegal proceedings. So in effect, they crowdsourced a patent defense fund that not just Cloudflare, but everybody else attacked by this patent troll. So in the future, if patent trolls come after Cloudflare, this will probably deter patent trolls from attacking Cloudflare because it could invalidate not just their suit, like Cloudflare might win their suit, but also literally any other party in litigation with the patent troll. And that's the patent, providing an internet third-party data channel. I mean, wow, that's pretty vague, isn't it? And the judge, God bless him, took one look at it and said, yeah, this is ridiculous. So yeah, they've uh, created this system that hopefully more people will latch onto and participate in so that these patent trolls can be kind of crowdsourced out of existence. Nice. Krista, you know, I thought about you here because I think this is kind of impossible with, I don't think these guys understand how Imgur and Reddit work. Yeah, I don't. But would you go in for this? Would you put your name on something? So Adobe and Twitter are designing a system for permanently attaching artists' names to pictures. So Adobe actually has something kind of like this already where you can put your name and like, who the work was for and stuff into the, the information on the image. But the only way you can check that is if you like have an Adobe product to look at it. So I don't understand how they're going to make this work this time. Well, they want everybody to adopt their stuff. Their obviously. standard. Yeah. yeah. But 
I don't, but, I don't know if that will work, though, if something is widely used as images. But the first time someone takes your picture and screenshots it with Tumblr comments, <laughs> it's then, gone. Yeah, then who owns it? Yeah. I think, uh, well, uh, I think that's an impossible problem to solve. But something that might be neat is if Adobe uh, builds a blockchain for this. And it's like, oh, no, oh, oh no, blockchain, no. It's, well, somebody already did that. Well, but you can, but it's, if it's maintained by Adobe or some other large thing, you can embed, like you can take your image and produce a hash and then get that signed in the blockchain. And then you can at least prove that at the earliest point in time, you had that image on the blockchain. But if Adobe just owns it, that's not any kind of court proof. Who says that Adobe's the authority? The gold, that's the thing. It's just, there's not really a standard. It needs to be open. Yeah. And they'll never do that. Yeah. This is Adobe we're talking. This is going to be a subscription. <laughs> Another nine ninety nine. They, they, they could have opened Flash, and Flash could have been amazing, but instead they chose to have it die. Rip Flash. Rip, rip Homestar Runner. They could have open sourced it. They're, we could have a JavaScript interpreter of old Flash right now that's not terrible. But no, they, they refused. Rip new ground. There's a lot of different colors of cars you can get. And some of them are really weird. Like, whoever thought that dull gold color was good for cars? You ever see those old, like, Oldsmobiles? Yeah. They're like, it's like, I'm not brown, but also not gold. <laughs> Someone bronzed the olds. <laughs> and it's not even shiny like bronze. It's just dull I was like, why did it doesn't do that? show dirt because it is the color of dirt. Or <laughs> rust. I guess rust would also be good for that. Yeah. But people, you know, they're excited about having certain kinds of colors for their cars. What if you could just change the interior and possibly even the exterior of your car with the push of a button? Jaguar's Land Rover a AMOLED bodywork will change your car's color in seconds. Wow. What this a cool gimmick worth spending thousands of dollars on. I know what you're thinking. Show us that picture and or video. Oh, wait. There's nothing. There's no picture and There's or yeah. video. There's nope. just this idiot. Just, it's just this dude. So, yeah, maybe they could do that, <sighs> but there's no proof. Come on, Jaguar. Don't tease us like that. Jaguar. <laughs> there's, a, there's some guy that owns a, um, I think it's like a McLaren or a Ferrari or something in Vegas. And he's got the... Uh, the EL strips around the body panel and a little bit of lighting effects like that. So it can look like he's driving like the wireframe Ferrari or change the colors of the LEDs a little bit. And it's kind of like that. It's not as cool as like having the body panels change, but it is pretty cool. Yeah, that's fine in Vegas, but uh, drive that around a coastal town. <laughs> <laughs> it's a UFO. Mod, right. I saw a UFO. How about the roads of Canada where they're constantly salting them? <laughs> I saw a very salty UFO, Mod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should have put this with the other WeWork story. That oh. was a oh, sort no. of failure. But yeah, it just kind of points out that uh, WeWork's in a little bit of trouble. WeWork says it will divest all non-core businesses. I didn't realize they were interested in anything other than just co-working spaces. <laughs> I don't know what else they've got. <laughs> I think what they're trying to say is, you know, we, ha we have to honor these contracts, but in any other way, we're just running for the exits. <laughs> little known fact that they were also in the frozen toaster pastry business just, you're just gonna say frozen toasters i was like oh, no wonder that's going under like no one wants a frozen toaster. It's, eating toaster so it's it's a toaster pastry that's like regular toaster pastries in every other way but you have to eat it in somebody else's house oh. <laughs> and their house is weird and it smells funny <laughs> now you guys pronounce it jiff cat or jiffy cat I say Giff Cat. Gift cat. <laughs> <laughs> I chose the third option. Giffy Cat is... Uh, so they are forcing you to sign up. They used to be an anonymous upload. But I guess uh, people were abusing it maybe or they wanted you know to control the account. So now you have to sign up. And if you uploaded things anonymously, they're saying it's out. <laughs> Giff site, Giffy Cat. Giffy Cat. <laughs> <laughs> announces mass deletions <laughs> and threatens the internet archive team with a lawsuit. So yeah, this is sort of nuts. I think they've lost their minds. The internet archive was like, oh hey, you're going to delete everything? Well, let us get in there. And so they're just screen scraping because that's legal. That's been decided <laughs> that's, in court. That's been established. And uh, Goofy Cat says that that is a denial of service because they're hitting their services and it's not real traffic. And they're going to sue them for it. That's terrible. 
little bit of a meltdown. Now I'm going to say it. I've said it for four weeks in a row. <laughs> no Activision Blizzard products played in my home this week. Wendell? Nope. I played Overwatch yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I did. I'm trying to learn Ash. No. I'm real bad uh, at her. Well, you seem to be in the minority because a lot of people seem to be standing with Hong Kong and not buying or playing Activision Blizzard products. That's true. Activision Blizzard lowers expectations for holiday season gaming revenue. Scroll down and can we like just control plus on his face? Like just zoom in <laughs> at that pained expression. I don't have the... Uh, oh, do we, we have the keyboard we, up? We, we, gotta, we, we gotta lack zoom. the technology. Look at him. <laughs> Just keep going. Oh, it's oh, just it it's not going to get any closer. Yeah, it's a responsive image. Sorry. It's too, their programming is too good, Hollywood Reporter. No. <laughs> Poor guy. That should be a reaction image on our forum. It's just his pained expression. No, I think it's still a net win, though. That's what they're going to tell shareholders is because it's like, we didn't lose the Chinese market, which would have been a much more financially <laughs> severe loss. <laughs> but then they look at the percentages, and it's like, this is such a small percentage. Isn't this kind of a bad thing? No, don't worry about that. We'll get that Chinese market. Well, I think some of this has to be... So, Friday night, when Krista explained to us what Overwatch 2 is going to be, I was incredulous because it's it's stupid. It's stupid from like a business standpoint. It's stupid from every standpoint. It's the same game. It's and it's not out me. yet. And it's not even close to being ready yet. So, and wait patiently for one to two years while we sell you the same game. Yeah, that's essentially it, except you, so Overwatch as it exists now is PVP with a handful of PVE events. The new game will still have the same PVP mode, which you can play with people who are playing Overwatch 1, but there'll be updated character models and you'll have access to all new PVE content, which I don't really care about PVE, so I don't know if I'm gonna pick up Overwatch 2 yet. It oh. sounds like DLC. You yeah, are, it does sound like DLC. That's why I'm not picking up Overwatch 2. I don't think I am because oh, I don't play the PVE missions happen. now. It's going to happen. Why? Why would I? I don't care about the skins. I have 500 loot boxes. I'm just I don't saying. Know what I'm, I'm just saying it's going to happen. And the characters carry over, so like they why will would do I care? something to give Overwatch 2 players some kind of advantage. Uh, at least based on all the press information we have now, that's not the case. Oh, they would never lie. They would never lie, never ever. <laughs> They'll wait till next BlizzCon to they're, just quietly drop the... They're very sorry that you're not going to be spending money on their games. Yeah. Now here is, uh, you know, as someone who has just purchased a home, I can't imagine more of a horror-filled piece of news than to find out that someone rented my home and invited over 100 people into it. <laughs> this is, this should be the death penalty. <laughs> Airbnb says it's banning quote unquote party houses after the Halloween party shooting that killed five people. And you might be thinking, this headline doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, no, it actually, that's exactly what happened. Like, there was a party house, a bunch of people, like, let's rent a house on Airbnb and have a giant party there where everything gets trashed. What's the worst that could happen? It's interesting, though, because having gotten stuff from Airbnb before, there's always a clause on there that's like, does this house allow parties or large groups? Like if you're wanting to have like an event there. And almost everyone that I've ever looked at says no, but I guess these people didn't care about that or they found a listing, a rare listing that actually said it was fine. <laughs> hmm, let's see. The kind of people that invite shooters to their parties might not care that much That's true. about the fine print. Now I hope these shooters were trying to shoot the people who rented the place because they did such a ter terrible thing to that homeowner. But I don't think that's why they did it. I don't even know if this will be covered by the homeowner's insurance. Probably not. And it's Airbnb like, no. is notorious for like kind of screwing over <laughs> both parties if someone has an objection. So Also, I, you know, I, I'm not going to fall for the clickbait, but how curious are you guys about this Big Bird story? <laughs> what does it say? Scroll over. Don't click it. on it. Resist. Rare behind-the-scenes pictures from the early years. Oh, of, of Sesame Street, I guess. All right, I'm or maybe it's, yeah, you're not I've, interested anymore. I've lost some interest. Yeah. I've lost enough interest to move on <laughs> to the final and most ridiculous story of the day. <laughs> T-Mobile says it owns exclusive rights to the color magenta, and our ongoing series called The Ad Industry is imploding on itself. No, so oh, hang this on is, a minute. This, uh, <laughs> there is a precedent for this in design. You can actually copyright a color, but you have to pick a very particular Pantone shade. So Coca-Cola has its own shade of red in the Pantone color family, 
that's Coca-Cola red. Jay-Z has a color blue that's Jay-Z blue that only he can use. And T-Mobile did the same thing where they patented one particular shade of magenta. The problem comes is that they're now saying they own other shades of magenta, which they do not, in fact, own. <laughs> now, I still disagree with that. I mean, I understand it's stupid. what you're saying. It's stupid, but, but it is a thing that exists. Jamie, pull president. up the swatch. <laughs> this is hard to read, so let me just go through. This is what T-Mobile uses currently, right? This is T-Mobile pink that you see on their ads. This is the one they own. Not quite as bright and brilliant, Kind of sad. It? Yeah, it's a little sad. This is lemonade. Now, if you look really close, that is a little different. That is different, yeah. Slightly different. This is the color that Lemonade tried to use after they were told they couldn't use this one, and were told, no, you can't use that either. And this is the third one they tried to use. Which and is they were told, decidedly more purple. You're not, <laughs> no, you cannot use that. This is, if you argue that pink, like they call it T-Mobile pink, this is purple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's Lemonade purple. Listen, I took a color theory class in school. That's purple. Color theory. <laughs> <laughs> uh. There's actually quite a bit to color theory which I bet is weird after the sjw revolution and uh higher education color theory m means something much different in college <laughs> i bet it yeah well my art program doesn't exist anymore so this is uh got rid of it this is happening in germany but it may also have u.s implications as well but they're getting away with it that's the point lemonade doesn't have the legal power to, to actually fight, fight it yeah. which is crazy because there's case law that would probably help them but also how up their own ass and how good do they feel about themselves for the art director was like yeah we're called lemonade but we're not going to use yellow <laughs> we're using paint is it a raspberry lemonade it's it's a, like a technology company that has is nothing it? to do with lemonade it's well, maybe they use like a it's a online insurance yeah. that's even more confusing is <laughs> your head going to explode yeah purple insurance is like or purple lemonade is like online insurance that's, I mean, that's, I just, I think it's strange that T-Mobile would be this up in arms. It's not even a competing industry. Like, it's, it makes no sense why they'd go after them for this. Well, uh, I think, you know, it's like an online app like theirs is, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Backcountry I, did something similar to this. I, it's a I, website. I really struggled. I wanted to work in some kind of a Cave Johnson quote here. It's like, when life gives you lemons, you demand to see life's managers and make them take the lemons back. But I don't. Well, thank God you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. There's just nothing that works here. And that's the end of the episode. It's so terrible. We're going off the air. Bye. See you Friday. Bye.